This video is sponsored by Arc, which is the easiest way to find remote developer jobs. Stay till the end of the video to learn how you can leverage Arc to build an amazing remote development career. Last year, the global pandemic forced most of us to quickly adapt to working remotely. In 2021, it has not only become a viable option, but for many, the preferred option as well. Regardless of whether you're doing it as a choice or because you don't have an option, working remotely in some capacity is the reality in 2021. So instead of treating it as a temporary arrangement and letting it affect your work habits, you might as well accept it as part of a modern work culture and learn how to get the best out of working remotely. In this video, I will share some tips that I have learned from my own experiences and hope that they will help you as well. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington, and this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, all the reference materials from this video will be linked in the description below, and I have timestamps, so feel free to jump to the sections that interest you more. All right, let's get started. So the first thing to do is set up a dedicated space. A room is ideal for meetings and all, but everyone does not have the luxury to dedicate an entire room just for work, especially if you're living in an apartment and working alongside your significant other who may be working remotely as well. So that being said, you should still aim to dedicate a space for work. This can be part of a room or some other nook or corner around your home. Personalize this space with things that inspire you to work hard and stay motivated because if you're a social person like me, having to work alone all the time can get depressing and demotivating. Also, don't hang out in this space after you're done with work because you don't really hang out in your physical office watching movies and eating popcorn after work, right? Treat this space the same way because this sets you up mentally to remain focused in this space. Speaking of dedicated space, if you can afford it, set up an ergonomic workspace. Most of the time, offices provide you with economic furniture, but at home you generally don't have them. I know that some of these things can be expensive, but because remote work has become so common these days, there are a lot of good cost-effective alternatives available. At the very least, get an adjustable work chair with good cushioning and a sit-stand desk. Think of these as investment towards your health instead of just expenses. And also ask if your work can compensate for it partially or in full. Most companies will do that for you. Just like setting up a dedicated space, it is equally important to set up the right tools. You're most likely already using some sort of a communication or video conferencing tool like Teams or Slack or Zoom or some other internal software that your company has created. But outside of communicating with your teammates in a general context, there are a lot of technical conversations that happen between software engineering teams. Things that get decided over a lot of whiteboard sessions, development specs with complicated diagrams, pair programming, and debugging. All of this now needs to be done remotely. Decide as a team what you'd prefer to use for these activities so that the experience is consistent for everyone. And to that end, doing all this remotely means a lot of data sent over the wire, which probably means you want to invest in faster, higher bandwidth internet. Uh, not just for downloads, but uploads as well. Because the last thing you really want is choppy internet when you're trying to debug a critical life site issue with your teammates. Dedicated space, tools and all, yes, they're important and make your remote work life so much better. But nothing, and I will stress this one more time, nothing is more important than proper communication. You all have seen the memes where the customer wants something, the PM writes some other requirements, and the developer builds something else altogether. Communication is hard as is, and you add remote work to that equation and it becomes incredibly difficult. So you will need to pay extra attention to communication. See, it's very common for people to keep their cameras off during meetings because not everyone has good internet and videos eat a lot of bandwidth. Also, not everyone has a dedicated workspace and many people are just not comfortable in front of the camera. Regardless of the reason, taking away facial expressions from communication takes away a lot of contextual information. You lose the intent that expressions implicitly express. Things that are meant to be up to the point and concise can sound rude. This is amplified tenfold when you take away even the verbal aspect and communicate just over email or chat all the time. You completely lose the tone, which you will need to add back somehow to communicate effectively. So be careful when you type away or make quick comments. Think about how others could perceive what you're saying, especially if you are in a new team where your teammates have not met you or don't know your personality yet. Also, people have different personalities and different styles of communication. 
Some love to chat, some like having a quick call, others prefer email all the time. Try to learn your teammates' personalities. This is especially true if you have a new teammate or you're new in a different team. If you're a manager or a mentor, make sure that your new hires get a ramp up buddy. A dedicated person that you're allowed to bug guilt-free with all your newbie questions. Or else it can get overwhelming for the new hires to have to ping random people that they don't know and constantly ping them with silly questions. And finally, try to set up social events and happy hours when possible. It can get really lonely sitting behind the screen working with people only in the context of work. Work is fun when you go through difficult and stressful times with your colleagues, but also celebrate working together. You socialize, you play games, you just don't see each other as people that are there to earn a paycheck, but fellow software engineers that enjoy sharing similar interests. If you could work on improving only one thing out of all the things that I mentioned in this video, improve your communication. It will have the biggest impact on your remote work life. Okay, enough of communication, let's move on. The next tip is related to creating some boundaries between your work and personal life. That boundary was implicit before in the physical separation between your workspace and your home. With remote work, that separation does not exist, so you'll have to create one. We have already talked about creating dedicated space for work and only using it for work. That's a great start. But because of the lack of commute, you can very easily get caught up in the mixed state where you partially act like you're home and you lounge out and you partially act like you're working and doing your tasks. Essentially, you're neither fully chilled out or nor you're fully focused on work. Obviously, this can be a major hit to your productivity and effectiveness. But not only that, because you never fully disconnect, your mind never gets to de-stress or relax. So you'll need to somehow make distinct separations between working and being home and relaxing, even though technically you're home for both of them. Now, how you manage to separate those contexts depends on you. Some people follow a strict start and end time to work where they wake up, take a shower, and get ready as if they're driving to work. Others, like me, like to use my calendar to create events and follow them religiously where over time you learn to very easily switch between contexts uh, when you're working or not working. This gives me more flexibility and allows me to utilize my downtime more effectively. But regardless of what method you choose, be deliberate about it and work when you're working and relax when you're relaxing. Because the last thing you want to do is try to do a bit of both. The next step builds on the previous one it is to remember to take breaks. When you go to work to your office, it forces you to take breaks. You walk to people's offices or desks, you go into conference rooms for meeting or daily stand-ups, uh, you go grab lunch, play games in the hallway or socialize with your teammates. At home, you have none of that. So it can easily turn into an eight to 10 hour session where you sit slouched in your chair. Sitting for long hours has a lot of negative effects on your body, like muscle tightness, nerve damage, bad heart health, and lack of proper blood flow. So set up a reminder to get up and walk around or stretch every hour. Go grab a glass of water, let your pets out, or just focus on your breathing. This is even easier to do if you follow the Pomodoro technique of alternating between focus time and short breaks. If you want to learn about this technique, I have a dedicated video on it, so feel free to check it out. I'll link it in the description below. But speaking of being effective at remote work, you can only do so if you actually have a job that allows you to work remotely. I get a lot of messages on Instagram from people all around the world asking me on tips on finding remote jobs. Well, the first place to start when looking for a remote development job is a good platform that specializes on remote work for software engineers. One such platform is Arc. Arc's remote career platform aims to help software engineers and developers build amazing careers from literally anywhere and it is the easiest way for you to find remote developer jobs. Arc is a smart remote job search tool that aggregates remote jobs from all around the web and shows you the ones most relevant for you. They also have a remote developer career community to help you land a job even faster. So who's Arc for? Folks like you who watch my videos, software developers, mid-career to senior level experience, those who want to work remotely, permanently, not just freelancing, all of you that don't live in and around the world's tech hubs like San Francisco or Seattle. And it also does not matter whether you have any experience working remotely or not. Arc is unique in that it is 100% dedicated to remote development jobs that are permanent, where you're part of a team and not just a freelancer. They also have a huge catalog of more than 20,000 active job listings. You can also skip the upfront hassle and fast apply directly to Arc's trusted hiring partners. And finally, they have an amazing remote career community for discussion and support, networking, content, and exclusive events with top remote companies like GitLab, Buffer, and Zapier. 
So if you are interested in a remote software development career, give Arc a try. Visit arc.dev and fill out some information about yourself and they will customize the remote jobs for you based on your preferences like location, skill sets, so on and so forth. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully some of these tips will help you get the best out of this remote work situation we are all in for at least the foreseeable future. If you think I've missed an important tip, put them in the comment section. Also, are you a remote developer? Do you love it? What do you think are the pros and cons? I would love to hear from you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, consider subscribing. If you want to reach out to me personally, hit me up on Instagram at Engineering with Utsav. I do my best to respond to every single message I get. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.